A California judge has struck down legislation that would have forced companies to meet a racial, ethnic, and LGBT quota on their board of directors. The ruling granted the summary judgment to Judicial, to judicial Watch, who was the group responsible for challenging the law. Now, according to the summary, the law violates the Equal Protection Clause of California's Constitution. The 2020 law required corporations to include at least one member of an underrepresented community on their boards of directors by the end of the year. These companies were forced to comply by either adding a seat or by filling a vacant one to these standards. Let's bring in the president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fenton. Well, Tom, first off, thank you for being here and congratulations. The great legal work by our lawyers in this case, and uh, it's shameful that we had to be in court over it uh, in this day and age. The idea that you can reserve certain slots in a publicly traded company or any company uh, to people based on race, ethnicity, or LGBT status is is just an anathema uh, to you know dozens of years of anti discrimination law and the Constitution, and of course in California. The Constitution is even broader in its protections than the federal Constitution in matters like that. So uh, our legal team did a great job. Uh, and thankfully, we had a court who saw right through what the government was trying to do here. Yeah, as you point out, it it is unconstitutional that we keep seeing these kind of moves in very left-leaning states like California. So how important is this judge's ruling and will it prevent future pieces of divisive legislation like this one going forward? Well, you know, it, it seems to me that there, well, if, he, if the court had ruled that it was okay, in my view, it would have been Katie bar the door. You would have had a left-wing states and localities uh, engage in all sorts of uh, CRT-based analyses that would require companies and contractors and such to hire people directly based on race and other dis uh, and other qualifications that should have no bearing as to whether someone gets a job or not. Uh, but the fact that the court shut that down, uh, at least in this case, it suggests uh, that you know the law rule of law is maybe going to prevail in this area. So what the left is doing, Emerald, is now they're trying to get the big investment firms of Wall Street, and in many ways they're already doing that, and big investors to misuse mm -hmm. investor dollars to require companies to engage in this race-based discrimination all under the guise of diversity and inclusion. It's still well, looking at the recent video <laughs> it's just recently flavor. released. Disney tapes, we know they're already doing it. Yeah, in a lot of yeah. cases, as you said. Yeah, and it's still a now. Will this be the? Does this put an end? Own. Sorry, go ahead, Emma. No, go ahead. Yeah, it's and and a state mandate requiring discrimination obviously is illegal. For private companies can't go around hiring people based on race as well, no matter how much investor uh, left wing investor pressure they're getting. Uh, so it it the battle's never going to stop. But I mean, we're in this remarkable period of time where the left is engaged in an all right and an outright assault on our anti-discrimination laws and the federal constitutional provision that provide protects against discrimination, at least uh, by the state, is the 14th Amendment. So not only attacking all these federal laws and obviously the state echoes of the laws, uh, but the federal constitution and, and again, state constitutional provisions that also protect our right to be treated equally. I mean, why, why is that a matter for debate? Why is that a court case? Now, will this put an end to this legislation or will California appeal the decision by the judge? I don't know. Uh, California has been fighting us tooth and nail in the courts. We had a separate case and it's still pending because the judge hasn't ruled in the trial. It was a trial before the judge where they had another law requiring a gender quota for boards of directors. And in that case, the the, uh, the state uh, fought us in trial for weeks and weeks and weeks. So I don't know if this if the leftists running California are going to give up with this initial decision. Now I do want to move on to 
other recent developments, that being in the Gretchen Whitmer so-called kidnapping scandal. Two defendants were, two defendants were recently acquitted and the other two uh, forced the jury into a deadlock. Now, this case has really highlighted corruption by the FBI, which Judicial Watch has worked so many years to fight. With this high-profile case, with what we learned from it and was able to see about how the FBI uses its so-called undercover agents and informants, will there be any accountability or change? Because I felt like you and I have talked about this a lot in different cases over the years, and it's still happening. Uh, well, you know, if past experience is an indication of future behavior, no, there won't be any changes. Uh, but I would hope this highlights for uh, uh, leadership in Washington, D.C. and citizens that the FBI really is not salvageable. They can't be trusted to prosecute jaywalking let alone a politically sensitive case that they created out of whole cloth, it looks like, based on the jury's response, uh, where uh, you had this allegation made there was this kidnapping plot to target a Democrat governor who was unpopular among conservatives and Republicans, and they used that to attack Donald Trump directly. And so this case was, was used as a cudgel during the campaign of 2020, and According to the jury, the FBI made it all up. Well, and it also preceded the January 6th riot, where we continually learn more about who exactly was there. There's the same kind of questions about the co-conspirators and how much the FBI was involved in or, or was actually present on the ground that day. How do you feel this Whitmer decision might play into some of these J6 defendants' cases? Well, A, it's the same FBI prosecuting or over-prosecuting in some cases these January 6th defendants. We've already had an admission in the New York Times. They, they dropped it uh, through the Times a few months ago that there was at least one informant present among the crowd. Uh, separately, the D.C. government has admitted or the government has admitted in court filings that the government of D.C. had a police informant at present at uh, the U.S. Capitol. So I have no doubt there were informants present. Uh, whether they were instrumental in, in inciting any violence is an open question. And it's even more open as a result of this Whitmer case. Uh, you know, it's ironic. I have, you know, to have informants involved in that crowd. Well, you know, is that the end of the world? No, but the secrecy around it suggests that maybe it is the end of the world as far as the FBI is concerned and that there was misconduct or covering up. Whenever the government can't admit to something simple, like, of course we had informants. We were concerned about security of the Capitol that day. Big crowds were coming. We had our people there. Instead, it's they pretend there was nobody there or if they or any admissions that there was somebody there are dragged out months and if not a year after the fact and and it makes me suspicious so i don't trust the f i don't trust the fbi Emerald. so we want to know what's what's going on and that's why we have litigation on these issues uh not only against the fbi and doj but other agencies we're still trying to get accountability and transparency for the Russiagate investigation, though we have learned a lot more, right, over the last two to three years. But Durham's case is still ongoing. Durham's investigation is still ongoing. And really, there haven't been a lot of indictments in his investigation. How do you feel about Durham these days? And will there be more accountability at some point? If this is the beginning, he's off to a good start. It's a little late, but it's better than late than never. If it's the end, it will be a disaster in terms of accountability. Um, you know, there was one, you know, we were talking about the FBI. There was one FBI lawyer who pled out, got a slap on the wrist in terms of punishment, but none of those other FBI folks have been targeted yet. Now, maybe there's more coming down the pike, uh, but now it's three years and three prosecutions, uh, one plea deal, two haven't even gone to trial yet. Uh, it's going mighty slow, and uh, there's not much excuse for the slowness. Yeah, and that FBI lawyer you referenced, Kevin Kleinsmith, is still able to practice law. I think a lot of people feel that that's not exactly justice. Justice delayed, justice denied. Thank you, Tom, for being here. We're, again, congratulations on the win in California, and thank you for all the good work you all do over at Judicial Watch.